From animals that shouldn't be able to fly to faces on Mars, today we look at nine mysteries that have finally been solved. Number 9. Anastasia Alive The mystery involving the youngest daughter of the Russian Tsar Nicholas II made for such a good story that people have willed themselves to believe it despite it being debunked several times. As the story goes, when the rest of her family met their untimely ends during the Soviet Revolution at the hands of the Bolsheviks in 1918, little Anastasia somehow escaped. This tale originates from a con artist named Anna Anderson, who in the 1920s claimed that she was the daughter of the last king of Russia. Though none of the other surviving members of Anastasia's family supported her claim, there was just enough mystery that the whispers and rumors of her escape continued. The legend gained new legs when in 1991 the burial site of the family was found, but two of the Tsar's children, one boy and one girl, were apparently missing. Finally, in 2007, archaeologists found the remaining two bodies in a grave nearby, and the DNA of the girl's remains were an exact match to the royal family. Still, there are many people, including some historians, who remain unconvinced and most assuredly will continue to profit off books and television shows on the mystery of Grand Duchess Anastasia. Number 8. Richard III For over half a century, historians were puzzled as to the details of England's monarch, King Richard III's demise. But what exactly happened was a mystery, as no one knew where he was buried. Some had theorized that he was captured and then executed while some thought that he fell in battle. The truth would be uncovered in 2012, when a construction company that was tearing up a parking lot in Leicester, England, found his remains. Forensic scientists were able to prove that the end of his reign was a product of battle as he had 11 distinct wound marks on his skeleton. They determined that he was either overwhelmed by several soldiers or fell after fighting a long bout of single combat. They also found that Shakespeare's depiction of him in the play Richard III wasn't completely accurate. Though he was a semi-hunchback who suffered from scoliosis, the rest of his body wasn't deformed, as was written. Number 7. Sailing Stones in Death Valley, there are a series of stones that have been making tracks in the sands of the racetrack playa for hundreds of years. Because of their mysterious traveling, the rocks and boulders are referred to as the Sailing Stones. The racetrack playa is a relatively flat, dry lake bed, so the movement of the stones across the desert ground had puzzled scientists until 2006. This was until Ralph Lorenz and his team of NASA scientists discovered that ice was the mode of transportation for the stones. During the winter months in Death Valley, ice sometimes forms on the bottom of the rocks, and with the help of wind, the rocks glide, albeit very slowly, across the flat, frozen desert. Over years and years, their trail steadily increased, so it looks as though the rocks raced across the desert when no one was looking and then froze in place when anyone stopped to investigate. Number 6. The Dark Side It has long been known that the far side of the moon isn't always dark. In fact, it gets just as much light as the side that faces us. But one of the bigger mysteries in science was only recently solved. Why does the far side of the moon lack the valleys or smooth lake-looking features that the near side has? These gigantic basaltic flatlands are called morias, or seas by astronomers, and give the front side of the moon its iconic features, also providing us with our image of a man in the moon. The back side is much simpler looking. It lacks any substantial marias and is littered with craters likening it to a golf ball. Scientists have known for a while that the backside was much thicker, while the front side was thinner, possibly exposing it to more volcanic activity when the inside of the moon was still young and hot. This volcanic activity is likely what caused the Marias to form as lava would smooth and pool the same areas again and again over time. But the mystery that really puzzled scientists since 1959 was why the backside of the moon was so thick to begin with. In 2014, an astrophysics professor at Penn State named Jason Wright put forth the now widely accepted theory. The theory is that four billion years ago, the moon was formed when a giant asteroid or planet crashed into the Earth and split off a chunk of it. This chunk, which became the moon, became locked in orbit with one side facing the insanely hot Earth. As a result, the backside cooled much more quickly, which made it much thicker. So when asteroids would periodically hit the backside, they would only leave craters. But when they hit the front side, they would break through the thin crust and releasing the piping hot liquid magma from inside the moon and creating the dark seas that we see on the moon today. Number 5. The Bosham Head 
Around the year 1800, in Chichester, England, a large stone object that resembled a human head was found, but the true identity of the object escaped archaeologists until 2013. Known as the Bosham Head, the severely weathered 375-pound marble fragment was found in a flower bed of a garden in the township of Bosham. Using a 3D laser imaging technology, scientists scanned the head and were able to verify its features. They found that the head dated back to the year 122 AD and was that of none other than Roman Emperor Trajan. Though the rest of the statue hasn't been found, archaeologists and historians theorize that it was built by the Emperor Hadrian, who succeeded Trajan, in order to welcome ships into Chichester, which was then part of Roman Britannia. Number four, the face on Mars. The alleged face on Mars mystery has never really been a mystery to anyone who understands the phenomenon of pareidolia, which is a phenomenon of the human brain seeing familiar patterns in random occurrences or naturally formed objects. Unfortunately, the face on Mars mystery gained an undeserved amount of attention due to UFOologists and ancient alien theorists purporting that it was evidence of intelligent alien life forms. All it took to debunk the myth was shooting the Martian Mesa at different angles and with different lighting and better quality cameras. In fact, if any of these aspects are changed, the face completely disappears. The original image was taken in 1976, and the depiction of the face is so coincidental that it's even hard to replicate without the sun being in the exact same place and using outdated cameras. Sadly, due to television shows and online conspiracy theorists, NASA recently had to officially come out with a statement on the face and explain that they had never found evidence of life ever being on Mars. Despite the overwhelming facts, many people will continue to excuse real evidence as part of a cover-up and continue seeing faces in strange places. Number three, the Franklin Expedition. Sir John Franklin and the crews of the HMS Terror and HMS Erebus set out on what would be known as the Franklin Expedition in 1848. They went searching for the Northwest Passage through the Arctic Ocean, but were never seen again. There were many theories as to what happened to the expedition, ranging from the logical, they were trapped in a blizzard, or the water they were sailing in froze over, to the supernatural, that they were abducted by aliens, or the ships were swallowed by a sea monster. In 1981, the bodies of some of Franklin's crew were found on King William's Island, which lies in the Canadian Arctic archipelago. Over the next 10 years, more bodies on King Williams and nearby Beach A Island would be discovered and analyzed. The causes of the crew members' untimely demise were determined to be a combination of pneumonia, tuberculosis, and lead poisoning from their food being contaminated by lead in the ship's soldering. In addition, the bones of the bodies had evidence of cutting and scraping, only further giving credence to the idea that the crew had to resort to cannibalism. Though finding the remains clarified how their lives ended, it didn't solve the problem of what happened to the ships and how the expeditioners ended up on the islands. After 168 years of searching, the mystery was fully resolved in 2014, when the wreck of the Erebus was found beneath the icy water of the Queen Maud Gulf. The wreck of the Terror was found two years later, and the combined finds allowed the missing pieces of the tragic tale to be filled in. In September of 1846, the ships became trapped in ice, the crew was forced to abandon them and try to trek through the icy terrain in hopes of reaching an outpost or town in the Canadian mainland. Sadly, none of the 129 men would make it out alive, succumbing to their ailments and the elements before ever getting within a few hundred miles of civilization. Number two, the Bermuda Triangle. The Bermuda Triangle has long had a place in the works of science fiction and horror writers, so much so that people actually started believing that there was something actually going on there. While scientists may have known that the disappearance of ships and airplanes didn't happen at a higher rate inside of the triangle that lies between Florida, Puerto Rico, and Bermuda, it took one scientist to officially put the mystery to bed. The Australian version of Bill Nye, Dr. Carl Kruzelinski, says that the only reason there is an apparent increase of shipwrecks and airplanes gone missing in this area is due to the high traffic nature of the area, which is in essence the mouth to the Gulf of Mexico. In fact, his recent research found that the Bermuda Triangle doesn't even crack the top 10 most dangerous waters in the world. If a person digs deeper into the alleged vanishings and disasters, they will find that almost any real incident had no supernatural origin, and the other tales are mostly embellishments or complete works of fiction. One of the biggest mysteries of the Bermuda Triangle is what happened to Flight 19, a seaplane carrying 13 crew members that was lost in 1945. Dr. Kruzelinski found that on the date that the plane was reported missing, the weather in the area was abysmal, 
with surging waves of almost 50 feet high. In addition, the flight's pilot, Lieutenant Charles Taylor, had a history of getting lost and was noted as being hung over from excessive drinking the night before. The radio transcripts confirmed the human error factor in the plane's disappearance, as Lieutenant Taylor thought the plane's compass wasn't working correctly and even ignored the suggestions of his co-pilots, which would have put them back on track. The combination of human errors and weather is what most of the tragedies in the Bermuda Triangle can be attributed to. Number 1. Bumblebee versus Gravity The idea that the flight of the bumblebees defies logic was started in the 1930s by a French entomologist named August Magnan, who surmised that bees shouldn't be able to fly. It took 75 years for the overlooked fact that makes this possible to come to light. In 2005, Professor Michael Dickinson of the University of Washington found that one major detail was overlooked in previous studies of bumblebee flight, the direction that their wings flap. For centuries, bumblebees were perceived as flying just as other winged creatures do, with wings that flap up and down. In reality, bees' wings flap forwards and backwards, likening them more to a helicopter than a bird. This back and forth creates wind vortexes that keep the creature aloft instead of using the lift method pushing air downwards as airplanes do. 